All right, here we go, Scotty. Another players only here. Do it. Let's do it. We've <laughs> got fresh off flying into Columbus, the Pittsburgh Penguins forward Vinny Henestroza. And uh, Vinny, I want to get right to it. You guys got big plans tonight. I don't know, maybe a tomahawk on the menu <laughs> or whatever, because uh, we heard this uh, sound the other day. George, you were great, but this guy was flying all night. Carl. Oh. Oh, it's nice. Which way Good job, boys. Team dinner on me on Monday in Columbus. <laughs> Let's have fun. Keep it rolling. Hey, you got you got to love the comp dinners, right? So you guys got big plans going out on uh, Carl or what? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love a free dinner? Uh, yeah, Carl. Uh, a couple weeks ago, when we played his old team, San Jose, he put uh, team dinner up on the board. So. Um, got the player of the game last game and, and felt like he needed to do it in Columbus. So um, we just landed here, get a couple hours of rest, and then go over to the most expensive meals on the on the menu tonight. <laughs> do you know what, uh, where you're eating tonight? There's a lot of heat to, of restaurants there in Columbus. Uh, I think it's Marcella's or Marcella's. Nice, nice. Italian I love it. Black, so, well, do you know oh, that it's, spot? It's top shelf. Yeah, great, great food. Yeah. You guys will have a good time. Uh, hey, I, I want to ask you real quick. Uh, want to get to know you a little bit more uh, as a player and uh, just growing up in Chicago. I found it really interesting. So you played with the the highly esteemed sh uh, Chicago Mission, and I thought it was really cool that we got that picture we can put up here, and it shows uh, you're on the on the bench there. You got uh, you got Ryan Hartman. I actually looked here. Is that Nick Lappin? Uh, that's either Joe or Tim Lappin. Nick Lappin was uh, two years older than us, but uh, his little brother and cousin were on our team. So you guys, it was you and Hartman on this uh, this squad. You also had uh, Schmaltz, I think, is a couple years younger than you guys too, right? And, and talk about how cool it was to, to be a part of that organization and what it did for you kind of as a springboard going on and, and having the success you've had in your career. Yeah, I think uh, when you look at minor hockey, especially now, there's – there's kids switching teams and moving to different states, and we were kind of lucky to have the same group of guys for about eight years playing the same team. So uh, we were able to win a bunch of state championships. Uh, never got a national championship, but uh, I mean, it was it was great. Um, the mission was a, a great organization, and um, a lot of guys move on there, get Division One scholarships, and uh, hopefully play pro. So um, I always like to go back and, and skate at those rinks there, um, and still see some of the coaches around that were there. Uh, when I was, but uh, yeah, I mean, me and Hartsey got lucky. We both were drafted to Chicago, uh, kind of started our pro career together. So um, we actually played football together uh, growing up too. So um, small world and um, yeah, it's, uh, it was a great place. And I'm lucky I got to play there. Funny, funny story about Hartsey, Ryan Hartman. Uh, he got traded from uh, Chicago to Nashville my, last year, right? And he was coming in, he was learning the systems, and everyone's like, hey, Hartsey, hey, Hartsey. And that's been my nickname for 17 years. So I'm like, oh, this is getting too, too out of control. Did you make change? I said, I'm like, your nickname's Deuce, uh, you know, the Hartsey number two. So everyone started <laughs> calling uh, Ryan Hartman Deuce, and then uh, I was out of there, and I, he went back to Hartsey the next year. But uh, yeah, so I'm assuming that you're a Blackhawks fan. Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, I grew up a Blackhawks fan, but uh, I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, when I was younger, they weren't showing any of the games on TV. The only way to see it is uh, if you went to the games. So uh, I think uh, my dad, my uncle, my cousin, we'd try to go to one or two a year, but um, we didn't get to watch it that much. And then uh, when I was in high school, um, that's when they got Taze and Kane and, and really started turning it around and a lot of excitement for the city. So, uh, yeah, I still follow uh, the Hawks and um, definitely who I grew up watching. Yeah, so uh, talking about the 2010, 2010 Hawks, uh, did, were you watching that game six? And uh, did you know that goal went in that Patrick Kane scored against us, the Flyers, there in overtime? Yeah, I think uh, if you see a guy selling like that, he had to see something. I think he had a, he had the best angle seeing it go uh, five hole on late in there, if I can remember. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, just, I remember him skating all the way down the ice and, and jumping in, in Crawford's arm, I think. And uh, obviously, as a kid in, in Chicago, that was really cool. And, um, it, it helps you aspire to, to do things and, and get to certain places. So, um, yeah, it was great growing up and getting, getting to watch those guys. I mean, super uh, cool and, and kind of rare that you, you grew up in Chicago, played for the mission, you go on. Uh, I think you played, what, Waterloo of uh, the USHL. Um, you then you get drafted, you, you play in Rockford, then you play for the Hawks. I mean, everything's been pretty centralized for you. And, uh, you know, how important was that for you? I mean, you, obviously... Uh, 
things you played for other teams since then, but that's that's pretty good consistency in the same part of the country for a good stretch. Yeah, I think uh, when I went to juniors, it was uh, in Waterloo. I was four hours away. Um, and then I ended up going to the University of Notre Dame, which is an hour and 45 minutes away. Um, and then uh, I went to Rockford and then to Chicago. So um, I kept getting closer there. So it was nice, nice for my family. Um, I guess one negative would be um, all the people from high school that uh, used to make fun of you for not making the parties and stuff because you're always <laughs> on the road playing tournaments, uh, asking for tickets and stuff. So. Um, it was great for the, the family aspects and stuff like that. And it was really cool to uh, play for the team I grew up watching and, and get started there. Um, yeah, so no complaints. Yeah, so you've had good guys to look up to when you were a kid, and then you're drafted by Chicago, and then you end up making the team. So you got, you know, Taser, you got Kane, and now you're, you know, a couple teams that you played with, and now you got Crosby and Malkin and stuff like who, Not to pick one, but see, playing with those guys uh, side by side, kind of joking around with them with every day, practices, seeing those guys compete. How cool is that for, for you? Uh, just talk about that for a sec. Yeah, I think um, starting in Chicago, obviously, uh, you start skating with those guys, and it's just it's just amazing the things they could do um, with the puck and how hard they continue to work every day. I mean, um, all these guys that you mentioned, um, it, it's not uh, luck that they they made it this far and have had such uh, successful careers. They're they're truly some of the hardest workers that I've, I've seen on the ice. And um, I kind of went to I went to Arizona and then Buffalo, and um, kind of there wasn't those guys. There's really good players, but there wasn't those guys who really put themselves in the role of being a superstar. So um, then coming to Pittsburgh, it, it, it's really cool to be on the ice with these guys. Um, learn from them every day. I think um, if you look at these guys that you see on Twitter and stuff, people talk about uh, having an old group and stuff. But um, I think those guys are some of the best guys in shape on our team. And, and, and the, the work ethic they have is just, it's incredible. So uh, it's great for the team and it's, it's great to be a part of. I was looking, you've played in four, I think, outdoor games. Uh, the first one would have been, I guess, Notre Dame, was it BC at Fenway? Is that is that the first one? Yeah, we played at Frozen Fenway. We played uh, Notre Dame versus Boston College. Yeah, and then you and then you, you played in uh, numerous other ones. I mean, the, the big one here, you had the, the Heritage Classic, a big goal and an assist in that game. I mean, how was it, like, growing up in Chicago, did you, was there much, I, we know it gets cold there. Uh, is there much mm -hmm. outdoor skating happening in Chicago? Like, um, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't find there to be too much in the Midwest where I was from, but was there a lot in Chicago? I mean, it's not a, not a crazy amount. I grew up in Bartlett, which is, uh, like, 45 minutes from, from the city, and uh, we had... Uh, near the community center, uh, they'd make a rink, and, and it was kind of a, a parking lot. They would just let ice over, and um, they would throw water on it and, and put lights up at night. So that was kind of a, a meeting place, and uh, the ice would get so bad and stuff. But, I mean, the memories I made out there with friends and cousins that, that otherwise you wouldn't get to go on the ice with was special. And uh, those are kind of the, the memories that uh, you, t you take a lifetime, and, and that's kind of what gets you in love with the game. You got some nice production in that game. You had uh, other uh, outdoor games like we mentioned. Here, here's my pr prep, uh, proposition for you, <laughs> uh, if I can say the word. Uh, would you trade all four of those? I was so, so mad when I saw that you end up getting traded to Arizona right before the big one <laughs> in Notre Dame for the Hawks. Would you trade yeah. all four for that game to play at, uh, at Notre Dame? I mean, I don't know. That would have been really cool, but uh, the experiences I had, like, I don't think I would give them back. I think uh, having my family at the Winter Classic in St. Louis was really special. I think um, the other one was in Minnesota, and um, that was really special. And, and Hamilton was obviously playing the Maple Leafs in Canada, and Hamilton was, was insane, and upsetting them was great. Um, being able to play at Notre Dame would have been cool. Um, we had training camp there that year, and uh, I remember we were all throwing the ball around the, the football field and just uh, picturing what the rink would be like. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you can't really control those things. So uh, definitely would have been cool. But, uh, yeah, I'm not thinking about it too much. So I, I've played with guys, uh, and you get in the road, uh, get on the road, and you get your uh, room key. You're going up there, and I've been with guys that uh, you know have had room 813, and they're like, "There's no way I'm taking this room. It has number 13 in it." Uh, so they'd call the you know team service guy, "Hey, I need a new room. I got to change the room." So <laughs> the big question is that I want to know because I'm not a huge 13 guy. You know, I don't know, superstitious, whatever it's called. But uh, you've had 13 on a few different teams. Why? And what the heck are you thinking? <laughs> 
Yeah, so um, I wore 12 in in junior. Um, that was kind of just a, a random number. I wore 43 my whole life. And then um, I have one sister. Uh, her birthday is February 13th. So when I went to Notre Dame, uh, somebody was wearing 12, so I chose 13. And I loved wearing it, you know. Um, I loved uh, watching some of the guys that were wearing it. Uh, I remember watching Johnny Gaudreau and stuff. And I uh, just thought it was a cool number. It kind of just stuck. And uh, in Chicago, I didn't get to pick my number. Uh, I got a signed 48 and just rolled with it. And then going to Arizona, I uh, chose 13 again. I had some luck with it at Notre Dame. So um, it's a number I, I like. And uh, I think going to Buffalo, I wore 29. Uh, Mark Pissick was in 13. And uh, my son's born on February 9th. So uh, I wore 29. And then obviously coming to Pittsburgh, uh, 29 uh, flurry wearing that's a pretty special number so not something you could even think about doing so uh, i chose to go back to 13 and it's, it's funny you talk about the rooms so i'm not gonna say what floor i'm on but um it ends in a 13 oh, so uh, oh here we go good sign for tomorrow hey, it's baby pretty, uh, it's funny. It's that, funny. that leads us right into this because you <laughs> we have we hear this a lot when there's interviews in different places people talk about the bump you get from it i mean it's a real thing here where we've had players come on. We had Jonathan Marceau on. He was like, ah, my, my start of the season's been slow. I'm going to get one next game. He got a hat trick the next game. We had Matt Barzell on here. <laughs> he was like, you know what? I'm going to get one next game. He got one next game. So with this and that new information you just provided, you're going to have a big game, uh, I, I think, coming up here real soon, right? And I think there's only like six or seven uh, floors in your hotel. So make sure you put a do not disturb on your, on your <laughs> hotel phone number so you're not getting calls in the middle of the night. Just a veteran uh, telling another veteran what to do there. <laughs> hey, I, I want to know. Uh, we're going to get to a, 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 like a kind of more of a, a lighthearted, fun part of uh, this segment. But I want to say one thing to, to you. Uh, I, I got to watch you play. I uh, love the way you play. Um, watching training camp this year in Pittsburgh, I'm like, this guy's got to be on this squad. Like, he provides something different. And um, just, you know, sometimes, and you've been around the game a long time. Hearts, you know, like, yep. sometimes you just got to be patient. And is, how difficult is that? I mean, you're, you're a pro's pro. You're going to work hard. And, um, you know, you went down to Wilkes and you, you worked hard. And here you are back up and you score right there in your first game back with the Pens. Um, what was it, what is it like, maybe just for the young kids out there, just to, just to have that belief in yourself and just keep working and, and knowing that someone's watching and eventually they'll get rewarded. Yeah, I think um, over my career uh, uh, playing pro, you learn so much and you learn that there's going to be ups and downs and there's so many things that you cannot control in this game. And um, the only thing you can control is your attitude and your work ethic and uh, the time you put in. And um, obviously, uh, when you're a younger guy, it's it's easy to feel sorry for yourself and and kind of be like, why why isn't this me? Why is this happening to me? But as you grow older, you realize that's not going to do anything for you. And um, you know, you just got to take it day by day and, and do everything you can to get back where you want to be. And um, I feel like I have a, a lot of hockey left in me. And um, I think um, having my wife and, and my two kids is is something that's really helped me. And you know, taking a step back and realizing this is just hockey and this is my job. I'm lucky to do this, but uh, I need to come to work every day and, and in order to get what I want out of this game. Well, well said. And uh, glad to see you getting back up and having some success here. So uh, we're going to get to this part now where uh, we're going we're gonna to know, we want to know what you're thinking. And we're just going to show some photos over your career and just maybe you remember these moments and you can let us know what you're thinking. Yeah, I think uh, that was actually in Pittsburgh. I remember that. And I was just... Uh, I think before the pick, my agent was like, I think they're they're taking you here. So wow. uh, I was just super excited. And obviously, anytime getting drafted to the NHL special and then wearing that sweater you grew up watching is insane. And then, um, you know, you don't remember much from that night. You're just super excited. I think we drove straight home after that. And I think my neighbors were waiting for me on the driveway with a bonfire. So. Um, it was That's great. awesome. That's so good. That's, That's cool. so good. Yeah. What a jersey that is, too. I know. Classic, right? <laughs> sweet. Classic. Uh, the next one here, you're going to remember this moment, too, because that jersey you mentioned was so special. It's a special moment wearing that jersey. Yeah, that's uh, after my first goal. Uh, kind of black out, I guess, until you see <laughs> the replay of it and kind of uh, got my own rebound and put it in. And it's, it's like a, a weight's lifted off your chest, you know. You're, you play the game for 20 however many years and it's just 
it's something special and you know you kind of reflect on all the people that uh, have led you to this point and you know your parents your family your coaches everybody so um that's something i always enjoy watching and, and something that's uh, really special to me kind of looks like you paid off marks from uh, just kind of shooting him right in the belly and him <laughs> leaving it right there for what just an empty cage there <laughs> nice work yeah <laughs> give me a favor there you knew, knew i needed one and i love seeing on the replay there one of the first guys in there says your boy hartsey or deuce yeah. hopping in there and uh congratulating you too so that's super cool you guys experience those moments together as well yeah i mean um we were in rockford together um in Chicago together so um, I was in his, his wedding this summer so uh, I wish I would have known the nickname before that I would have uh, started calling Duke <laughs> yeah, a little more that's think. great uh, I love it so uh, Hartsey didn't tell us the full reason they gave him that nickname but anyways move on <laughs> uh, yeah well, this is uh how about this was that what you guys are passing around the, the the championship belt was that like your your post game uh, MVP this is your hat trick game right yeah that was uh like our yeah player of the game uh, when you have to give a speech so um, got the belt and and yeah I had a hat trick versus Anaheim and and that's that's something that I'll, I'll remember too I think uh, paid him off on that first one too <laughs> slip, slip the five hole, so. I'm just bugging it's not it's not easy to score goals in the in the National Hockey League so you're doing you're doing a heck of a job well but that, that's my that's a, a kind of a little side thing too though it's like you've got and when you got called up too uh, this year Mike Sullivan said like He's going to provide a, a spark, and, and we wanted our bottom six to kind of, you know, get that spark. And and how is that though? Because I think a lot of players you see over time, like you're an offensive guy, you have some good offensive touch, but you also play in a role that you need to provide some other things. And how how much of that is a balance? Like I can't go all the time because our team doesn't rely on me to be the guy going. I have to be sound in all these other areas. Is that something you just learned over time? Yeah, I think it's just being patient and not forcing things. Uh, I think learning that you're not going to score on every shift uh, definitely helps. And um, obviously we have guys in this team that are going to score a lot of goals. And, you know, if we could chip in a little bit, it's going to help so much. But I think my main focus is just um, playing a hard uh, three zone game and, and using my speed. I think that's my biggest asset to uh, make it hard on other teams and, and get behind their D. And I think uh, when you start doing that and, and using your own um personal strengths to inside the team system. I think that's when uh, you have success. So I think just uh, still learning how to do it here. And I think um, just doing it better is going to help help even more. Who's got a uh, we got a picture here uh, of you and the, the two big legends there and uh, in Chicago with Ta uh, Taves and Kane. Uh, who's got a better backhand? You know, we always talk about Sidney Crosby and Patrick Kane are like the two that have the best backhands. I mean, they're very similar in a lot of ways, right? Yeah, I think um, I don't even know if I could uh, compare. I mean, when you're a kid, you're, you, you're watching these two guys, their highlights and uh, their shootout goals, their, their spinorama backhands that they put at top shelf where no one else can, where there's the centimeter of space. It doesn't make sense. The puck could fit in there. So um, I think I think it's pretty equal. I think they both uh, have great, great backhands. And I think uh, dry settles up there, too, like them, I think, um, no matter what, if it's on their backhand or forehand, they're they're going to make a play, whether it's a pass or a shot. So um, it's always cool when you see guys like that. Yeah, you might have to get that picture framed and have those guys sign it too. That's pretty. pretty That's pretty sweet. sick. <laughs> pretty sick one. Uh, I think we got a last one here. This is uh, <laughs> who came up with the Flint Tropics on this? Uh, whose idea was this for the Heritage Classic? I have no idea. <laughs> Jack, I, I, don't, I don't remember who came up with it, but it was freezing that day. And um, yeah, that was a Heritage Classic. We we wore those and and we were freezing, and then got ready for the game. And whatever whoever had that idea, it was great because it worked out for us. <laughs> That's amazing. Cody, Cody Eakin looks incredible there. Where is he right there? Oh my gosh, with the, 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 the red the red mullet with the uh, yeah. headband. Oh, straight from the movie. <laughs> he actually would be cast in that movie if they redid it now. So, uh, oh, yeah. shout out to Cody Eakin. Uh, I lied. We have one more coming up. What is this one? What were you thinking right here? I have no idea. Is that <laughs> who is that? Colin Miller? Who I is think so. You're grabbing his visor. That's a two-minute penalty, I think, nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could, I'd take two more pins in my. Uh... Hey, my staff work, so. <laughs> hey, don't don't hey, don't don't, get... don't be coy though. I you you're a feisty one. You'll get in there, right? Like that. You get That's in there, not gonna back down. 
Yeah, sometimes I think um, the smaller guy, especially uh, guys, sometimes think they could take advantage of you. But uh, I think just giving a little cheap cross check or a little face wash in front of that, and then getting out of there is something I've uh, hey, perfected. R Rupper made a career out of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Just hey, uh, one last thing. Just uh, when uh, since I've been retired and doing this, we spent a lot of time in Chicago. And we always got the pizza debate, right? And uh, I had pizza last night, a little, little New York style. New York pizza, yep. Where are you, uh, you Chicago style? You deep dish? What, what are your pizza loves? I am not deep dish. You're not? Um, there's a place where I live now in uh, Elmhurst, Illinois. It's called Roberto's. Uh, it's thin crust. It's, it's phenomenal. We order it probably every weekend when we're home. And we throw some hot jar and air on there and some fresh Parmesan cheese. And Damn. Uh, I mean, there's so much good pizza, but uh, like, I'm not, I'm not a deep dish guy. Oh, hey, all right. shout out! Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I love that. I love now too, like all the places doing like that, uh, the hot honey on the pizzas yep. and stuff. Um, that's my new, oh, yeah. my new jam on a thin crust. So, anyways, hey, Vinny, awesome, uh, for awesome you taking out the you. time. We know you just got in here, settling in. Order the best steak on the menu tonight uh, on Eric Carlson's tab, and uh, we'll be watching you. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. See ya.